Hello everyone, this is N. Kavita, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Electronics and Instrumentation Engineering, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology, Coimbatore. Today we are going to see a specific topic on VLSI design, CMOS Process Technology. Before getting into the fabrication of CMOS, it is very important to know something about the process of a chip making. So here we are going to see an overview of a chip making process how a crystal growth is made into wafers and how these wafers are turned into the fabrication process. By undergoing several fabrication process, we can create a process to wafer. Finally, a chip is being created. When packaging is done, it comes out like a perfect one. The very first step is how to grow the silicon ingot. The most common technique which is used is Krokolsky method. In short, it can be called as CZ method. This is developed by Mitsubishi Materials in 50s. Initially, they have just created a silicon got of the length up to 2 meter. Diameter is 200 mm with 225 kg of weight. And the pulling will be taken up for 100 hours. We will see the process now. So here you could see a Skrokolsky method. In the Skrokolsky method, we are going to put the molten silicon over here. And when the seed is taken up, here we have got the electrodes, we have got the graphite crucible, a heat shield is present over here with a quartz crucible. When you put the silicon inside this and when you make a, a orientation, a crystal orientation can be determined by using your seed orientation. So when this is allowed to spin with certain RPM, obviously when you pull up the seed, you can able to obtain a silicon crystal. So here, the inbound diameter is determined by your temperature, orientation and extraction speed. We will see the next part called wafer shaping. And there are two major types of wafer shaping. One is called slicing, the other is called lapping. What is called slicing is, when you are going to cut your ingot in your ground down, say for example, when you cut it by using a uniform diameter, then it can be sliced about 1 mm. The other method is called lapping so now the sliced wafers are mechanically lapped so how it is being lapped is we can use an alumina material to remove the surface roughness so that if there is any damage which is caused by your socket it can able to improve the fitness of the wafer so slicing and wafering are the two different types which we are using here still after the wafer is being shaped for enhancing the shape of the wafer we are going for a process called etching you might have heard about this word etching, right? So etching is the most important part in case of your fabrications. So any mechanical damages which is induced because of your previous processes can be removed by using your chemical etching. So this etching is, you can able to make it physically or by using your chemical component. Once the etching is completed, we are going to make a polishing process. So how it is done? So here we are going to improve the flatness of the wafer by making it more flat by using a colloidal silica. Now, for example, if we are going to check out the uh, target, which is nothing but our C mass inverter, you know that we have got a P mass, we have got N mass. The combination of P mass and N mass together is called the C mass, which is complementary metal oxide semiconductors. So with this act like an inverter. When you provide an input over here, when you apply an output, it provides the inverted output. So in order to create this layout, we have to know certain basic steps of fabrication. We will see the CMOS process now. Initially, in order to create a complementary metal oxide semiconductor, you have to define your active areas. You have to etch it and filter the trench. Once it is done, we are going to implant the well regions. If it is a P type, we are going to put a N well. If it is a N type, we are going to put a P well region. Followed by that, we are going to deposit using a polysilicon layer. Once it is done, we have to implant the drain and source regions and the substrate contacts. It is well understood that you have already learned about it. This complementary metal oxide semiconductor is similar to your MOSFET which has three terminals, source, drain and gate. Once it is done, we are going to create the contact cut. The main purpose of this contact cut is that you, can, you are going to put a metal layer inside it. Once 
all this process is done, we are going to make the photolithographic process. So, in case of this photolithographic process, before getting into the photolithographic process, we have to know what is the main steps involved in the photolithography. Initially, I am going to focus with the oxide growth. Once the oxide is growth, what we have to do is we have to make few few steps in it. We will see the steps one by one. We have to put a photoresist coating into the silicon layer. Once the photoresist coating is done, what we have to do is we have to make the a further process like I have to expose it for the stepper exposure which is nothing but a stepper motor will be placed in order to uniformly coat your photo layer. So once it is done, the photoresist is developed. After making the photoresist, I am supposed to create an acid etching. The unwanted parts can be removed by using your acid etching. Once it is done, I have to spin, rinse and also dry the specific wafer. Once all this is done, I have to go for the process step which is nothing but ion implantation, metal deposition, plasma etching. We will see all about this process steps one by one. So once this ion implantation is done, I am going to remove my photoresist. That is, in order to remove my photoresist, once again, a etching process or an ashing process is done. And now, we are going to see how the oxide is now being created. You know, already the word itself indicates the oxidation of silicon surface will create a silicon dioxide layer. The main purpose of using silicon dioxide is that it behaves like an insulator. So, these oxide layers are used to isolate my metal interconnections. You can find here, this is silicon. I am depositing silicon dioxide. So, you can find the difference over here. So, what is required here? A step called annealing is required. The main purpose of using this annealing is I can able to restore the crystal structure once the oxidation is done. So, this oxidation can be taken place with the help of the heat. So, it is called thermal oxidation. So, how to create a photoresist for the silicon wafer? As you can see in the picture here, I have put a silicon wafer over here. Once the silicon wafer is put up, the surface of this wafer can be coated with the photosensitive material. So, this photosensitive material is called the photoresist. And now, whatever the pattern I have to develop onto the photoresist, I can put it onto the photoresist material. That is, you can create a mask pattern which can be developed on your photoresist. And how this is done is, this is done actually by exposing the specific silicon wafer to the UV light exposure. And again, here this photoresist are actually classified into two types. One is positive photoresist, the other one is negative photoresist. So, based upon the exposed or unexposed part of the photoresist, the properties can change, which is very simple. Actually, you are going to dissolve it or it is going to become resistant to the light source. Once it is done, I am going to expose it to the stepper exposure, which is very simple. This exposed mask, which I am going to place in the specific process, the mask pattern can be developed using a photoresist with a UV light exposure as indicated earlier. And this glass mask will be having the pattern which you have to transfer back. So, whatever the pattern you have to transfer into the silicon wafer, you can put a mask sample and that can be embedded into your required structure. So, how this photoresist development is done? Actually, the wafers can be developed either in acidic base or a acid solution or a base solution to remove your photoresist. So, once the exposed photoresist is removed, now this process that is after you are removing the photoresist from the silicon wafer, it is called soft baking. So, this soft baking is done at a lower temperature. Once that is all done, the unwanted portions we have to remove by using etching. Etching is the most common process to pattern on the material to a surface. So, once a desired shape is patterned with photoresist, the, all the other unprotected areas can be easily etched off. You can see here, this is a layer 1, which is the silicon dioxide layer. I have coated a photoresist. Once the photoresist is coated by using an etching process, I can able to remove those required areas. Once this acid etching is done, I have to spin, rinse and dry. So, a special tool called SRD, which is an abbreviated form of spin, rinse and dry, which is used to clean the wafer after each acid step. 
So what they are using here is they are using a deionized water to remove any residual chemical substances which is present onto the silicon wafer. Right. So here you can also use your nitrogen because it has no reaction to the silicon. So followed by this we are going to see few other process step to create a CMOS fabrication process. The exposed areas can now be subjected to different process step and implantation, plasma etching and thin film deposition. So once all this is done, you can able to remove the photoresist by using the other technique called ashing technique. So what is done here is a high temperature plasma can be used to remove the remaining photoresist. So this can be done without damaging your previous layers. After ashing the wafer, it is now ready for the process called photolithography. So what is photolithography? Once the process is done, that is making a specific silicon wafer by you are pre-preparing it by imparting a silicon dioxide layer by coating it with photoresist and you are removing the unwanted photoresist. Once all this is done, we are getting into the main process called photolithography. The word itself indicates the word photo means it is going to be light. The word lithography is nothing but stone. So here what we are going to do is we are just taking a silicon substrate over here. Above the silicon substrate, I am just coating with the silicon dioxide layer which is acting like an insulator. This process is called oxidation. Once the silicon substrate is coated with silicon dioxide, I am coating with, with the photoresist material. So once this photoresist is coated, I am putting a mask over here. What is this mask? Is Whatever the pattern I require, I put that pattern above to the silicon substrate and the UV lights are allowed to pass inside this pattern. So based on the properties of positive photoresist and negative photoresist, these areas will get soluble under the UV light because of the exposure of the UV light heat and this will become open. So now this photoresist is being ready. Once it is done, we are going to make a etching process. That is the unwanted areas are removed at this stage. Here you can find we have got silicon dioxide. We, can, we have got the photoresist. In this specific areas, the photoresist are being completely removed. So what is done here for removing those photoresist? Etching is done. And this etching can be a chemical or it can be a plasma etching. So once the etching is completely done, I go for the SRD process that is spin, rinse and dry. So wherever the unwanted materials are present, I am still making it further to remove the unwanted excess parts. So once it is done, finally the resist can also be removed by using a hashing technique. So this hashing technique is not that much important because the seventh step is there actually. You have to implant a polysilicon doping layer and that is a very optional step. So hope uh, this video is quite helpful for you to understand the fabrication of a CMOS. Thank you so much.